on the Wisconsin political stage. Now, we know that Senator Tammy Baldwin will be running to keep her seat in 2024, but we still have no idea who her Republican challenger will be. Not a single Republican has announced that they are entering the race, but Mike Gallagher won't be. The congressman from the 8th District and chair of the House Select Committee on China will run to keep the seat he has. In good conscience, I just couldn't devote the time necessary to run for the United States Senate, and I really feel like I, my highest and best use to Northeast Wisconsin, to the state of Wisconsin, to the country, is by continuing to go all in on the work that we're doing both in Northeast Wisconsin and with the Select Committee on China. And for some analysis, some projection on this, we're joined by J.R. Ross. He's been a guest before on the show. He is the editor of WISPolitics.com. So, J.R., how difficult a decision, I know we kind of all expected this, but do you think it was a difficult decision for the congressman? Uh, my impression from my conversations is that Gallagher listened to the wooing that was going on by national Republicans, but people were never really convinced that he would embrace that opportunity because there are better opportunities for him if he waits. What I mean by that is people are looking at the dynamic of 2024. You have an incumbent senator, Timmy Baldwin, really good fundraiser, uh, has won by healthy margins twice already statewide. The uncertainty of who is going to top the ticket for Republicans in 24. Um, Donald Trump is currently leading the polls, having some legal problems, if you will. That could kind of complicate the math of an already difficult challenge of beating an incumbent. Look down the road. If a Republican were to win the White House next year, Gallagher could, for example, join the administration in a capacity with the Defense Department. I mean, he's got this expertise as a former Marine. He could wait until 2028. Um, Ron Johnson, you know, was going to only serve two terms, ran for a third. I think people aren't really expecting to run for a fourth. An open seat is a much easier get than it is taking an incumbent in Wisconsin, just generally speaking. So there are just better paths for him. And in the alternative to taking that risk in 24, he can focus on being chair of the Select Committee on China. Mm -hmm. He can keep increasing his war chest. I mean, there's just a lot of more pauses for him to stay where he's at and to take that leap right now. Well, you mentioned the wooing by the Republican Party. You folks reported today that they were even showing him polling numbers mm -hmm. of a hypothetical race against Tammy Baldwin, and those numbers apparently were close. Do you have any idea how close and, and, and then bigger picture, just how much pressure he was under from the National Party to run for the seat? I mean, they basically were about even, but I caution people with polling, you know, take some of the grain of salt. Um, the National Republican Central Committee is showing that poll to <laughs> encourage exactly. Gallagher to run, right? Like this is, you're doing a sell job. <laughs> so you're not going to show them a bad poll that you get that shows them down by five or 10. Right. Uh, you show the best numbers you have. So there's that piece of it. So yeah, there was some pressure, but again, it's not like Gallagher doesn't have other, other options uh, for Republicans nationally. He is their best option, was their best option to take on Baldwin. Now they're looking at, you know, people like Tom Tiffany, congressman from northern Wisconsin, mm -hmm. um, Scott Mayer, uh, Franklin businessman, or Eric Hovde, uh, Madison businessman. You know, they've all got pluses or minuses, but none have the profile that Gallagher does or the war chest. Now, Hovde and Mayer can write personal checks to help get things rolling, but that checkbook doesn't necessarily match up with what Baldwin can raise nationally. Right because he's a proven fundraiser who's done it before and has this national fundraising network. It's, it's, it's tough to take on an incumbent who has that kind of network regardless of how wealthy you are. Well, right, and, and I think the last time you and I visited, you talked about it, and, and these guys have, have this money, but you might be throwing good money after bad here because as you mentioned, she's won her races, uh, I think the first time it was a, a six point margin. I think the second time against Leah Bukmir, it was an 11 point margin. We talked to her recently when she was here in town and I asked her what makes you so tough to beat. She kind of laughed, said she lost a, uh, a class president election when she was in middle school. That's the last time she lost an election. Why in your opinion, outside of the fundraising, is she such a tough opponent? Well, she does things like she's in Green Bay talking to local media. She goes to Marinette, the shipyard up there, mm -hmm. and talks about projects. She goes to Wausau and talks about projects she's co-sponsored or pushed for and spending bills. She goes out there and communicates to voters through local media. Now, Ron Johnson travels the state like Baldwin does. But when Ron Johnson goes out there, he mostly talks to kind of uh, the choir. He meets various Republican events. He goes on national uh, media and gets attention that way. I mean, he has a platform there, but that's not connecting with Wisconsin voters. Baldwin does a better job, people tell me, of going to where people are 
and talking to them and getting in that local media because when you are better known by locals, they go, well, wait a second, there were these ads calling her this crazy mass liberal, but I saw her here a month ago talk about dairy policies. That doesn't make sense. It helps her. Now, Baldwin is not like unbeatable. Right. I mean, every U.S. Senator, uh, especially those in Wisconsin, go through these cycles where people forget about him. Her numbers weren't great the last Marquette Law School poll. That's partly because she's been out of the public eye for a while in terms of like a, a race. Uh, but Ron Johnson's were worse in 2022, 21, the outside of that race, and he still won. Um, so she has to get back out there in terms of like running the ads, getting a more higher profile. And, you know, Joe Biden's numbers aren't great either. Um, looking at various polls that we see is upside down. It's just about his age. The economy could, you know, floor could drop out at any minute sometimes, depending on who you talk to. So there are definitely challenges for her. But as you say to her right now, if things are as is, she's a pretty strong um, incumbent who would be tough to beat. The question is, who of these alternatives that Republicans have? If Gallagher is out, who can they turn to would be a real strong challenger to Tammy Baldwin? Well, JR, thanks so much for the analysis and the insight. Have a great weekend. Hey, you too.